So this is just a quick video to show you how to set up your uh, radar, the Bridgemaster E in the simulator for ENAV3. So you're going to be doing uh, various labs each week and every time you, 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 uh, a new uh, scenario comes up, you're going to have to reset your screen. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you can see here I got my cursor. So we're going to start off here, we're going to start off in this top corner, we're going to work our way down here, we're going to come over here, go up to here and come down there. I'm just going to show you what the initial settings are. All right. So first thing you're going to do is for these labs is we're going to set the range to 12 miles. So right now uh, the range is 3 miles. So if you look here on this cursor, you see here's the cursor and you can see there's two boxes and one of them is lit white. That means that if I left click, I'm going to have a menu come up. Since it's the, the one on the right, oh my fingers are over it. Uh, the one on the left is lit up and the one on the right is not. So I can left click and when I do, a whole bunch of scale stuff comes up. So I can go like that. Here's the other way I can change my scale. I can go plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. But if I want to jump from one to another directly without going in the intermediate ones, that's how I would do it. So you're going to want to set your range to 12 miles. Now, this is the band. Radars can be X band or S band for marine radars. We'll talk more about this in the lecture, the difference between those and in the lab, but you're going to want to set this for X band, okay? Uh, master, we're not going to worry about that. Then down here is transmit, okay? So this is now when you're going to start to emit signal from your antenna, okay? Um, so the radar will generate a pulse, it'll transmit it out, and it will also be listening for some kind of echo. So we got to tell the radar now we want it to start transmitting. So we turn that on. First thing we're going to want to do is tune. Tuning is uh, basically adjusting the frequency of the transmitted signal, okay, that's being sent out to the receiver. So it's making sure that the receiver is tuned to the right frequency for the energy coming back. We'll talk more about that in the lab. You can see right now as you look at this that this yellow cross-hatched pattern is completely fills up the screen and that means we're completely tuned. But if I wanted to, I could manually tune this, okay? And now you see here to to activate that all I simply see right down there the white the white box is lit up so I left click and now I got my tuning bars. Now, different radars will be tuned differently, okay? This manufacturer ha has us tuned one way. Another manufacturer could have you tune another way. You have to read the manual for the radar that you're using, okay? So, um, let me get those tuning bars in just a little bit better. Okay, so now you can see the tuning bars a little bit better, okay? So, they're the tuning bars. And uh, for this radar, you want the lower tuning bar to be as long as it possibly can be, okay? So there it is right there, and I'll just click, okay? Now gain. <laughs> gain is, is adjusting the sensitivity in the amplifier, okay? We'll talk more about this in the lecture as well, but basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that the radar, the signal is amplified enough that you'll be able to detect weak targets. If you look on the screen here, there's five targets on here, okay? And those targets are, they're giving, uh, sending back a fair amount of energy. Well, there might be some target, maybe it's a, a, a low-lying ship or a wood vessel or something like that that doesn't return, doesn't uh, reflect much energy. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that our gain is set so that we can re reflect, uh, uh, um, detect uh strong targets and weak targets. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this thing until we get some what I refer to as snow. I don't know if you can see right there, but you see these little dots there. Now look, if I bring gain, by the way, I'm doing all these adjustments making it go, that's minimal gain, maximum gain. I'm doing that by moving my mouse to the left, to, okay, moving my mouse to the right. Now, in this case situation, I've got something called saturation, all right? So the screen, you can see these places where it's completely yellow. All right, if there was a weak target there, I wouldn't be able to see it. So I don't want the gain to be to the point where I've got yellow everywhere. I also don't want it down here. The, uh, the amplifier is basically not, the r radar is not getting enough energy. It's, uh, anyway, we'll talk about that in the lecture. So I want to put this up enough. There are my strong targets. The way I'll know is I want to start to see some flecks on the water, these little white things, you might call them snow, it's actually returns from the tops of waves. And if I can see a little bit of that stuff, and usually I like to see it over the whole screen, then I know that I'm getting returns back from weak signals and I'll have to have confidence that if there was 
a sailboat out there or a very small little fishing boat or something like that, I might get some energy. I might be able to detect them as well. So now I'll click that because I'm happy. All right, now we're going to come up here. We're going to do our labs in relative motion relative. There are other, you can see now, if you look up here, there's two boxes. I can left click, okay, or I can right click. If I right click, I'm going to see all my options. Relative motion, relative, relative motion, two, true, true motion. We'll talk about the distinction between these in, um, in the lecture. We're going to be doing most, if not all, of our labs in relative motion relative in this class, okay? So you want to make sure you're in relative motion relative. Now, this is your orientation, okay? Um, that was our motion mode. Now this is our orientation mode. So I can right, you can see again, I can right click or left click. If I right click, I can see my three choices, heads up, north up, course up. For the labs, we're going to go ahead and choose north up. We'll explain to you what the difference is between these more in the lecture and probably in the lab as well, okay? Great, so I got that done. Now, over here, we'll talk more about vectors and uh, vectors later on, but your instructor may ask you to turn on trails. If they ask you to turn on trails, hover over trails, you can see the left box is lit up, so I click on that, and uh, for now, you just go ahead and put on perm, that's permanent, and uh, when right now the simulation is not active, we're going to start it and we'll start it in a few minutes and these targets will start to move. And when they do, you'll start to see they'll leave a, 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 a trail there. And we'll talk more about that in the lab, but this is how you set that up. Okay, so now EBL, that stands for electronic bearing line. And when you turn that on, okay, you get this little line here and this line is how you can measure bearings to objects. Now these bearings can be relative off the bow, they can also be true, okay? And depending on what mode you're in, you'll have to know what mode you're in to know what they are. Right now, uh, in this situation, these are both relative and true. Uh, this white line right here, by the way, is called the heading flash. Right now, the vessel is headed zero, zero, zero. This also happens to be north, okay? So this vessel here, the bearing is uh, right there, it, I, when you're check, taking the bearing of a vessel, you want to put the EBL in the center. You don't want to put the EBL uh, on one side or another. This is not correct. This is not correct. You always want to have the EBL line right through the center of the vessel. And then I can look over here. If you look where my cursor is moving over here, it looks like the, the direction to that guy is eight degrees true. Well, how far away is it from me? Well, I can turn on my VRM. Okay, and here's my VRM. Now the VRM, I'm going to bring out, the, the rules for the VRM are a little different. For the EBL, right in the center of the target. But for the VRM, we want it just on the inside edge of the target. Okay, on the inside edge of the target. Not on the back side of the target, not in the middle of the target, on the inside edge. So EBL, electronic bearing line in the middle. VRM, variable range marker on the inside edge. And I let go. Okay, now that target is at eight degrees, okay, relative and eight degrees true, and it's at 9.88 nautical miles. Now, I could write that down, and you will be writing that down in the lab. So here's the heading flash here, okay? We're going to give these targets some numbers. Now, there's going to be eight of you in a lab. You know, I don't want to be calling this target one and you're calling it target two and somebody else is calling it target five and somebody else is calling it target three. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your heading flash and then you're going to start going clockwise from there. And the first uh, target uh, that, that you come to uh, for bearing wise, okay, so the bearing for this one is like eight, the bearing for this one is going to be 42. The first one you come to bearing wise will be number one. So this would be number two. This will be number three, number four, number five. And we're going to show you how to set that up on your plotting sheet. But on your sheet now, you would write the, the, for, bearing, for time zero, for target one, the bearing is eight degrees and the VRM is 9.88. Now, uh, I can go ahead and I can go to target two. All right, so I'll do the same thing. I'm going to get this thing right, not on the right, not on the left, but right down the middle. I'm going to put my VRM just on the inside edge. Get that just so, boom, okay? Now, for target two, the bearing is 44.1 degrees, the VRM is 10.2. And you can repeat that going all the way around for the other targets. This is not the only way you can do this. I could do it without the VRM and the EBL, just using the cursor. So here you have, here's the cursor. If I wanted to do that, I'd put the cursor right there, 
Okay, and then on the screen down here, okay, I don't know if you can see where my finger is, but you can see here down lower right corner, cursor position, okay, and um, so you can see in the cursor position right here that the, the range is 9.93 and the direction is 7.9. That's basically the same information that we had before. So you're going to go around and collect that for all those targets, okay? Now, one other thing that your instructor might say in the first lab, they might say, oh, hey, turn on marks. So if you're going to ask, we're going to talk more about all these menus over here later on, but if you come over here, you come to the lower right corner, you click on tools, you're going to have, you're going to, there's word add here. So if you cl t click add, you can now come up here and you would put a mark on that target. And if I wanted to mark this target, I could mark this target. And I want to mark this target, I mark this target. Okay? And so on and so forth. Your instructor might tell you to mark your targets, they might not. If they tell you to mark your targets, this is how you're going to do it. And these are useful uh, for other things as well. Okay? If you want to get rid of these uh, marks, you click delete, click on it, click, uh, click delete, click on the mark, click delete click on the mark, so on and so forth, okay? Now, there's a lot of other features that we're going to talk to you about, uh, tons of stuff I've not mentioned here, pulses and all these kinds of things, but um, that is the basics. By the way, you'll see this thing, ARPA error, that's automatic radar plotting aid, so that's where the, the radar uh, processing unit is figuring out the CPA and the TCPA and all this kind of stuff of these targets. In this lab, a big part of it is you learning how to calculate that yourself in case your ARPA fails. So for most of the labs, you're going to see this ARPA error message there because your ARPA has been disabled. Okay, thanks. See you in the lecture and see you in the lab.